everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 45 minute session that I'm doing for a client. This is an energy attunement session. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals and then I'm gonna be getting started. Okay, so goals are, for this energetic attunement, I would like for you to connect with selenite. I'm open to whatever healing it would like to share with me. And the client did send me a follow-up email asking if I could intermix um, an energy attunement with selenite to also a, a look at the spleen. So I'm going to be doing both. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and relax. And remember, we're all a part of each other. So the energy that I'm sharing with the client, you too can receive as well. So all you have to do to receive energy is just be open to it. <laughs> and then it just does it all by itself because it's love. All right. Here we go. Okay, selenite. Okay. I feel a lot of emotion and it's wrapped right around the eyes and around the back of the head and the top of the head and it's emotional and sensitive. And it's sensitive around the ears too. So my goal here was to go to selenite and in the process of going to selenite, I'm running into this uh, vulnerability, okay? So we're taking a look at this. So, okay. All right, so I'm gonna describe here this next image and it has to do with this vulnerability. And the vulnerability is literally like right at the cheekbone and then to the eyes above. Like it's like cheekbone above. <laughs> and it just wraps all the way around the head. I can't quite understand it just yet, but it's a, a bit of a weight on the head and it's also blocking. Um, it's blocking out information from the universe as well. Hmm. And it keeps bothering the years too. I'm going to go ahead and step into your energy field more deeply. And I'm actually going to feel what this feels like for myself to have this on my head. <laughs> All right. They're showing me a mirror. And I see you're looking into the mirror and you're getting ready for a normal day. And this strange hat is going completely unnoticed. It's very obvious in the energy realm. There's something going on here. And your heart is heavy. But you keep doing the right thing. I mean, you're getting ready for the day. You're getting ready, your appearance ready, um, best face forward kind of thing. But the, this head thing is getting unnoticed and this heart thing is also getting unnoticed. And the more I stand here experiencing this head weight, the more it's sort of weighing down my neck and my head feels closer to my shoulders. Like, let's just erase the neck because it's just so much energy weight that's just pushing my head down. So I'm asking for selenite. And I'm welcoming this energy to come and take a look at this with me. Selenite is really wise. At first it came to what felt like a lighthearted child and then instantly it shifted and it started to show me some hardcore stuff is what it's like. And I see what is like lava, but it's white, pure white, and it's bubbling. It's like bubbling lava, pure white. And selenite says, I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to feel like this. I want to feel different than this. And it speaks from a youthful, childlike se sense of self. I mean very childlike sense of self. This is too heavy for me. This is too... There's something about the material, this white lava, that it, it burns, it hurts, it's, uh, it's very unbalanced, obviously. But there's a certain type of word that it's using about this. 
And I would just define it as it hurts me. This image, it hurts me. It totally, selenite is totally wanting to shift your energy from the adult mind into a childlike heart and an innocence in the way that you're processing your feelings, processing the world to make it innocent and simple, much more simplified. So selenite's shifting its image here from the lava that is boiling. Um, it's, it's not boiling anymore. It's smoothing out. It starts to look like a white glue, but it's really thick, really thick. It's like the consistency of melted rock, but it doesn't burn and it doesn't bubble. And it's starting to turn into a substance I could actually mess around with, like slime. <laughs> so I'm literally just playing with this substance with my hands, and it's like satisfying slime. <laughs> so I'm just satisfying my, my life right now with touching slime here. <laughs> and selenite gives me this experience. So we're doing this. And I'm doing this in your energy field. So you can enjoy satisfying slime with me. <sighs> There's a lot of it and it's squishy and it's kind of cold. It's got a bit of a wet texture, but it's not wet. And it's fun to just squish it and move it and shape it and then reshape it. But I quickly come to a state of feeling bored and unsatisfied. And I don't know how to shape or mold. Um, this is a parallel to life too. I don't know what I want to do to shape or mold my life. So life is satisfying, life is fun to play with, but now I'm getting unsatisfied, I'm getting bored. I want to, um, I want something new. You see how simple the, the language is here, working with selenite? It's, it's really simple images, simple experiences, simplifying things down, very childlike feeling to the way it's expressing itself to you. All right, so Selenite says, and it's speaking to your inner child right now. Selenite says, if you could shape your life in any way, how, how would you shape it? And it's asking your inner child um, what images and feelings are coming to the surface here when the question is asked. Let's see what your inner child says. Your inner child is feeble and she's wearing green, a light green color, and she's in green uh, grass and there's green sort of leafy plants and they're all like a lighter green. And she's uh, resisting. She's uh, kind of hiding, but n not really. She's not in the leaves. She's still exposed, but she's not standing up. She's not waving. She's not saying, hey, see me. So she does feel f feeble, emotionally feeble, but contained. And she withdraws from answering the question and she gets very shy about it. And Selenite comes and um, more visibly like an angel comes to your inner child and literally picks you up and holds you like a baby and then just strokes your your face and says everything is going to be okay do not burden yourself with such heavy feelings you don't need to burden yourself with such heavy feelings and selenite says this and you tell selenite but i have responsibilities i have a role I have a place in this world and I have relationships connected to my role. So you're speaking from the inner child as an adult. And Selenite says, your responsibility right now is to simply receive gentleness, lightheartedness, Satisfying slimeness. <laughs> <sighs> and 
And we're going to continue to work on alleviating all of this weight on your head by returning to a simplified way of being, an innocent childlike way of being and explaining and describing feelings and thoughts. So Selenite asks your inner child again, if you could mold and shape your life in any way you wanted to, how would you mold and shape it? And you actually start, uh, you have building blocks and there's yellow and they're like the old school, like made out of wood and there's yellow and purple and blue and you're building something with these building blocks and you keep saying, I'm going to make it really tall, really tall so everybody can see it and I'm going to make it really good so it doesn't fall over. And I'm going to make everybody really proud of me. And they're going to say, wow, you made such a good tower. You made it so high and it didn't fall over. And I'm going to feel so good and so bright inside because I did it. And Selenite smiles and nods and says, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. And uh, you, <laughs> you start crying. <laughs> Because life isn't this easy. <laughs> you have so much emotion inside. <laughs> because you want this, but you can't do it. <laughs> you feel this. <laughs> And so you cry, and you just cry. And Selenite holds you like a baby and says it's going to be okay. And you get carried away into a sleep. And you sleep for a little while with Selenite. This is, uh, there's more emotions here that need to come out. And they're coming from a purple color. <sighs> and there's a, a big resistance. And a big withdrawal as well, combined. <sighs> and this purple is also with white too. And the white is silvery white. And the purple is like a purple cylindrical block wooden block very simple and basic but the white is like a most luxurious satin like the perfect wedding dress and the purple will never stand as tall as the wedding dress will stand it's only like two inches tall and the wedding dress is like the, the height of a, a woman but there's nobody wearing the wedding dress it's just uh, upright and this wooden block and this wedding dress, what do they have in common? What do they have in common? <laughs> you do something really ridiculous and funny. <laughs> and you show me a saloon girl. And she takes the purple block and she puts it in her, her bra. <laughs> That's what she does. And she says, I put the purple block here. <laughs> And now this fits. This works. I just combined the purple block with my dress. It works. And I, I'm just a bit dumbfounded <laughs> by the thought process here. But okay, let's go with it. <laughs> let's, see what, let's see what happens here. Ah. You have to decide. The message that comes is you have to decide if you will wear a white dress or if you will take the purple color it's like you will either wear the white dress or you will transform it into a purple dress there's something about the color purple here but what about the wood of the block how do we combine that <laughs> just see what they say hmm and selenite comes in and selenite um, comes in as both male and female and the male looks like a kind of like a buccaneer type 
and the female is uh, like a, a woman from the same time frame, like the East Coast, um, is somebody who lives by the, by the sea kind of thing. And it is both combined. And it takes the wooden block and it sets the wooden block up on a shelf. And it shows you purple and then it shows you the white dress. And selenite then do, does something magical and it uh, makes it 50-50. 50% white and 50% purple. And it looks like zebra stripes all over it. And uh, selenite asks you to step into the dress and see how it makes you feel. So... You are going to step into the dress, but I will say, I can tell in your energy field that you are not go. You're not wanting to go too deep with this conversation, so you're wanting to keep it simple and uh, basic. You're resisting going too deep with it, and my I'm getting a feel here that I need to move past this image to go deeper, actually. Because as we're wanting to keep things simple, the selenite way here, um, there's also something about depth that we, we need to reach too. I haven't gotten into your spleen just yet, but let's see. Okay, you are going to wear this dress and then you're going to follow me to another door that goes beyond this. And selenite picks up what he describes, he and she describe as a cork to a wine bottle is what this wooden block turned into and then <laughs> the selenite image puts this cork into its like sh inner shirt pocket slash bra <laughs> like <laughs> it's like putting it into like a suit coat pocket and then putting it close to the chest and then <laughs> there's something about this all right selenite is taking it with us Okay, when I go deeper here, I can tell still that even deeper here, we're not deep enough yet. And this space looks like a bunch of uh, bats slash monkeys. It looks like monkey bats and they're uh, grayish blue and they have like red noses and red fingernails and toenails and they're climbing and clawing all over the walls and then they hang upside down like a bat would and they have wings and there's thousands of them thousands of them in here but this still isn't deep enough yet it's still actually um, a superficial tunnel i don't like to call things superficial because everything has value but in the weight of the energy world and what has the greatest value there is a thin value and a deeper value. So this is still very thin, okay? So we're going to go deeper. And we're going to take selenite with us. And as we go to the next phase, it's like the purple colors are starting to fade or uh, just almost disappear from the dress. It's almost like you are walking, you are moving beyond a time and um, that time is disappearing you're changing and not even the wedding dress matters anymore the cork doesn't matter the purple doesn't matter when you go so deep you start to understand what truly matters in life and it's it's not the dress it's not the purple it's not the cork okay and these are these are simple images right but they contain volumes of information. Even if we just say it's the color purple, when the color purple is translated by your subconscious, it's going to know exactly what that means. But I will say, I see you blossoming when we go deeper beyond all of this. And selenite is becoming more of a masculine figure and has a single flower for you and it's very simple and it's uh, it has yellow petals on it 
and just one single flower and then hands the single flower to you and you notice selenite in a new way you notice selenite as a gentleman and you have no clothing on you're like eve in the garden you are brand new you are brand new and you are like eve in the garden and selenite is like adam and adam now hands you a flower as a gentlemanly gesture and allows you to decide what the flower will mean to you he's he's not giving you the flower in order for you to like him and now go on a date with him he's like giving you this flower simply because he admires you and that's it and and the act of giving you the flower is so such a precious moment for his heart and his soul if that is all he ever experienced in this exchange it's as if he has gone to heaven to be able to give you this flower and he says that is what love is selenite says that is what love is when a single and simple gesture can feel as though you have walked into heaven even if it appears nothing comes from it but the gift of a single flower so much more is happening in this exchange You're nervous because you feel vulnerable when it comes to genuine love of this kind. It, it, um, I feel it in your heart. Okay, this is important because anger is now rising to the surface, a lot of anger. And it's very impressive, to be honest. I mean, it's... Uh, it's organized. It's not like um, splattered all over the place and freaking out. Like it's a, it's organized. It's um, contained. It's, it's together. <laughs> the anger is uh, together, and it creates a persona of you. Okay. And that persona of you is female, and she's like pure rage. And when Adam gives her the flower. Um, the Eve part of you, the flower, pure rage comes forward because it's the feminine, divine feminine side of you that has been broken, that has been harmed. And so the exchange is, is so extraordinary that it um, brings the rage in order to heal itself. But the rage is so angry it could get in the way of the meaning of the exchange because there's just so much wound. There's so many wounds about it. Adam knows about your <laughs> wounds. But it is not for him to, he says it is not for me to heal you. Um, Give me just a moment here. I really want to follow through with the vibe of what he's saying. It's it's a really big deal because it's wise. And it is a gift as well. Because the gift is the flower and how the flower and the gesture now give you the opportunity to know who you are. And gives you the opportunity to heal yourself and love yourself. Does it feel like a disappointment now that Adam will not stay with Eve? That Adam would just give Eve a flower and now walk away? How dare you? How dare you give me a flower and then walk away? There's anger about it, but it's not, it's not Eve's anger. It's the divine feminine anger. It's anger from memories of defilement to the divine feminine within yourself. And Adam is wise and Adam is strong. And Adam has to make what we would define as a very difficult decision. But he knows within his heart it is the divine decision in order to help Eve the most. Eve must help herself. But I will help jumpstart that by giving her this flower. But it's more than that. To Adam, it's heaven to Adam to even have the calling to even stand before Eve, to even be there to give Eve the flower. Like it's it's 
overwhelmingly heavenly and everything is right in Adam's world. What is now Eve's responsibility? Is Adam a jerk? No, Adam has made wise decisions. Adam is helping you. Okay, this is a really important story and message for your deeper essence. Super important. All right, now this is going to get a little bit more difficult because... Okay. Anger... Anger is really, really angry. <sighs> Anger is really good at containing itself or remaining kind of in a structured nature, but it is, it's worse than a volcanic or a volcanic eruption. I mean, it could blow up a planet. <laughs> I mean, if that thing was set right, um, but it's so incredibly contained. I don't know how, but it is. <sighs> now, as this anger was rising up, I saw an image of two jelly beans, okay? And then these two jelly beans I saw turn into two babies. And one baby is male and one baby is female. One baby is right, one baby is left. The babies inside of me died. The babies, the babies are dead. That my babies are dead. All my babies. My babies are all dead. <sighs> Your heart is so torn inside. <sighs> it's so disgraced. <sighs> and I tell the rage side of you, I give her a hug and I hold her. And I say that she is so beautiful. She does seem to know that she is, but she, that she is, that she is beautiful. But she is, uh, it's like a disease in her or a defilement that, that feels, uh, tarnished, like a tarnishment that can't be cleaned or healed, like a, like a stain that will always be there. And it's a, it's got a bit of a, like a disgusting, um, like a disgust, but, and it, and so you do, you do see yourself as a beautiful person. You really do actually this, but this also is inside of you and it is, it is like an infection. It is like a, it is eating at you. Okay. Okay. There is a huge, um, the heavy weight on the head, it's, it's very, it's, I'm feeling it a lot right now. It's creating stress in the back of my neck and I feel exhausted. I just want the world to go away. Just, I just need the world to go away. I just need to... I need the world to go away. That's kind of the next feeling that I'm getting. And I see... I see what is you... Um, you're creating kind of like a wall between yourself and... And life. And, and it feels okay to do this because you need this separation and you need this time for you and time to nurture you but you're not always sure how to nurture you you're not always sure how you do know how to put your face on you do know how to do your hair you do know how to get your best face forward but the weight that you carry you aren't certain you don't know how to you know, clean the stain. You don't know how to heal that. 
I will say this this contained rage is feeling majorly better. I mean, she's going through a real, um, she's getting lighter, lighter. Something else is happening now that you didn't know would happen. And I see Adam in the clouds in heaven has a basket full of these yellow flowers and it they begin to rain down upon your world. And the flowers each have a message for you about love, every single flower. And uh, he's granted um, the okay by heaven, by the divine, um, that you would receive these flowers to help you with this next phase of healing in your life. And he knows that these flowers are going to help you. And Selenite is watching over this divine act like an angel, angel of God kind of thing, like a pillar of light. All right, now, the next layer in this is uh, you have a lot going on inside yourself just so you know it does it does want to not live sometimes it just the burdens and the the extremes that have harmed you have harmed you deeply like disgraced you like Eve being the disgrace for mankind, for all of mankind's history. Like you just got, you're Eve and you just got spat on as the most disgusting, foul creation of God. And that is actually the level of defilement. I don't like to use the word disgusting, um, but it's foul, okay? And it's wrong. Because you don't deserve it. You don't. You don't. You are divine. Eve is divine. There are no wrong choices. There are only how do we learn and grow from those choices. Do we choose to love that much harder or do we push love away? <sighs> okay, so this part that is... It's a wiggle worm of I don't want I don't want to live. I mean it does it's it's not a big thing. It's not huge in your energy field. It's not but it is there, okay? Let's just say out of the large McDonald's french fry, we have one fry in here that says this, okay? One long french fry says this. <laughs> So it is in the large McDonald's fry. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> but McDonald's fries, I, I don't mind French fries. I like French fries. And so French fries are good. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. You needed to know this. Because you actually want to heal all the parts of you that are, are saying that. Because you don't actually agree with that feeling you don't and uh, so all the other french fries are now um parts of your consciousness so many different voices within yourself um, that help you get through everyday life right so they're all like people within you and uh, are now watching this french fry um and sharing pure love and and nourishment with it and I see all the french fries are starting to transform into selenite, like selenite sticks. Um, there's like all these like white glowing <laughs> selenite sticks slash french fries. <laughs> but it's pure love. And it's helping the one that uh, became like, I don't want to call it the weakest link because it isn't weakness. That is... It isn't necessarily that, but they're helping this one that became ill from the memories. They're helping this one and nurturing it back to health so that they can be a stronger team. And this is going on inside yourself. 
All right, we're gonna do something super cool right now. You've come a long way from the beginning, all right? So as we can see, you've been born with very big dreams, all right? And you love to show these dreams and be appreciated for them, just like anybody else. But along the way, it's like the tower, this extraordinary tower, it didn't reach the level of accomplishment and, and pure, innocent joy that a child would feel about it. Life didn't become that. And um, there's a, a disgracing of the divine feminine side of you that then tarnishes the tower, okay? And it's, it is on the level of Eve being the foulest woman of all time. Like, sp let's spit on Eve. It defiles her sacredness. It defiles divine feminine. And that, you can't, that is something I've run into here. So it makes sense where all this emotion is coming from. <sighs> but you are walking towards something new. And the flowers... I know I'm talking in some metaphors here, but the flowers that Adam are sh is sharing with you is is new energies, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful new energies, and it just beautiful new energies are raining down upon you um, by love and by divine masculine, by heaven, by angels, by selenite. It's cool. Now, I'm um, allowing you to be selenite, okay? And I'm going to be selenite too. <laughs> I think we should all be selenite. So, so, basically, I just keep seeing this image and our bones are turning into selenite. And the selenite energy is from top to bottom here, our head down to our shoulders, to our fingers, to our toes. It's in our hips, it's in our ankles, it's in our kneecaps, it's in, it's in everything, it's in our rib cage, it's in our spine. We are made of selenite, we are selenite. And we welcome the selenite energy in the oneness of its pure loving gifts. We welcome this to radiate from within us that we can remember the selenite sides of ourselves. And I see the light glowing really bright from within you. And the selenite is radiating a lot of energy here too around the head because we're gonna lift, we're gonna continue to lift off the burden, okay? And around the heart too because your heart has carried a lot, mental body, um, sexual body. <sighs> These are really tender spaces. <sighs> so I'm just placing a um, selenite into your sexual body, okay? And I'm going to place selenite too into your emotional gut and selenite into your heart and selenite into your throat chakra and selenite into your third eye. Okay, you had a, like an extreme reaction. You're, you're relaxing again now, you're okay. <laughs> Suddenly it was like too much selenite, <laughs> but you're okay now. Okay, so we put that in your third eye. You're you're adjusting just fine now. Put it in your crown. All right. It's really disturbing that weird hat you're wearing. Okay, I'm just gonna chill for a minute and watch this. I'm going to transform this head into its own energy and I'm going to place selenite within it and then we're going to do a magic trick and it was selenite all along, okay? 
We just got lost along the way and it became something else, but now it's selenite and now we are free and we feel good. And uh, selenite is showing me that the structure is actually crumbling now and breaking off of your head. There's still some sensitivity, I mean, straight into the crown area. There's still sensitivity there. I mean, it's a, it's a bit surprising. Um, it almost looks like a knife was stabbed in there. And it's made out of purple. It's like purple knife and it's light. It's a purple light. I'm focusing on it right now because that jam is not a good one. <laughs> Let's see what we can do to alleviate that. All right, so, so dark side of you is coming out right now. And dark side is literally just this out of balance dark side is just wound, all right? It's all wounds. <sighs> all right, so you're just getting that out. You're screaming, you're mad, you're so mad. <sighs> you literally say you're gonna you're cussing, you're like really extreme right now. And you're like, I'm gonna take that knife. Cuss, 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 cuss. <laughs> but you're like saying that you're gonna take the knife out of your head and you're gonna cut somebody apart with it. And there's a lot of cuss words because you're mad. You're really mad at this person. Oh gosh. And the third eye is really jammed up here too. Did you stuff something? Did you... I mean, it's almost like uh, you filled your head full of something so you didn't have to see or you didn't have to think about something that's been hurting you. And so it remains hurting you, a knife in your crown, and it's just a jam in there. We'll put a black hat on and a lot of energy weight, and then we can live a normal life. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to... We're at Selenite and I, we're going to do some things here for you. I just start to see, it's like you stuffed a bunch of socks in here, but it's it's not fluffy or soft. Um, so let's just call it sand, okay? It's like you're full of sand. And, um, and so I'm transforming it all into little pieces of selenite, all right? So it's not sand anymore, it's selenite. So you filled your head full of selenite, all right? <laughs> we're going to change the energy. All right, you say, please don't do that to me. I think my head will explode. <laughs> and I say, so the sand doesn't bother you, but the selenite does. We got to work on this here. <laughs> it's just too much. It's too much light and too much love. It's like too blinding for your, for what, your frequency right now. And I say, it's not too blinding, and I'm going to help you adjust because this is actually where you exist. Um, you decided that you don't exist in this super blinding, awesome selenite light, and you decided that you, you're gonna be like sandbag now. I don't know, but <laughs> with a knife stuck in it, like, no, no, that isn't you. <laughs> so I'm helping you to adjust and your heart needs reharmonizing. And you have got to acknowledge that there is some unresolved anger going on here. And it is actually in your crown where your wise thoughts are circulating. Okay. And then your third eye gets to use its wise um, perceptions of how it wants to evaluate these ideas that come from the stars kind of thing. Um, and then to see through those ideas. Um, as, yeah, I like this one. No, I don't like this one. Um, this feels like me that doesn't. But you don't want the third eye to evaluate the the ideas of heaven because you don't even want the ideas of heaven because you just need, you, there's just these anger jam in there. And then the anger, you just, you're just taking a break from it all. But you, we're clearing that out. <laughs> All right, you're doing a lot better. You're adjusting to, you. it's really bright. I could imagine you um, suddenly want to be in the sunlight a lot. Um, I could see that, I mean, it's like a, 
it's like you ter close the curtains on yourself for a bit. And um, you're standing in such bright white light. I in in it, you're um, healing in it so well that it's like you're starving for more sunlight. Like you're obsessively craving more sunlight, and you're kind of kicking yourself that you um, that you put a jam into the light, um, the ideas of light that um, stream into your mind. And I'm showing you this purple dagger, and it's just made out of light, but it is purple dagger. And I'm saying, what um, what are we going to do about this? Because you have to decide what you want to do with it. I can take it out, but I, I it's not. it has to be your decision. Do you want it to stay, or do you want it to go? You're, at, you're really going deep here and um, processing your feelings and thoughts on what it means to you, okay? And you say, I don't really know how I could... Um, it, it's like you show me an image where it's raining and it rains knives. And sometimes, you know, it's a sunny day and sometimes it rains knives. And so... There sometimes is a knife that goes into my crown. <laughs> and so how if I remove this, you know, what's the point? Because sometimes it rains knives and it's just going to rain again. And I'm just sort of like, are you serious? <laughs> so you're going to just let it rain knives on you? You're not going to like... Um, just create an awesome aura of light and the knives just disappear because you don't need knives in your life like why are you settling for a knives rainy day <laughs> like why <laughs> your emotions should be like every day is about rainbows and happiness and pots of gold <laughs> and leprechauns you know it shouldn't be like well sometimes it rains knives it's like don't even go there don't even state that don't even feel that way because you're going to create an energy structure and now it's your reality so don't do that <laughs> and this knife does come with a lot of pain as well and it is actually coming out now and you feel ridiculously exhausted and you are, you're, you're pretty much collapsing and, um, I mean, you're totally out. You are just totally exhausted here. Ah, oh, man. I'm having Selenite, uh, the angel come and uh, pick you up and um, take you to a soft place in this heavenly bright light Selenite world where you can rest in the light, not in the dark, sandbag, knife, raining day, <laughs> but in a soft, cotton ball feathery, angelic, heavenly world. Much better. All right. Uh, that was so good. That's a great ending. You really, really needed that. You really did, and this, I know we walked into some traumatizing stuff, but the venting of that is, um, has been quite successful, and I feel like, like the french fries phenomenon, that there's a lot more of what is within you that is working together and harmonizing and not judging the other parts that are vulnerable, but actually wanting to bring the wounds to the surface so they can be mended and healed. But uh, obviously we're human and sometimes when the wounds come to the surface, they can confuse us. We get kind of lost. We don't realize how lost we actually get. Weeks later, now we have um, a knife raining day, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but this is going to major help and uh, wasn't able to get to your spleen, but this energy work alone is already going to help um, move energies into a more harmonious way where everybody is working together. And everybody is every part of your body too. All your energy bodies, your physical body parts, all of that are going to start harmonizing with love. And the selenite too is also like purifying your blood because all that selenite energy is all over right now. Like you're totally a selenite um, being right now. Okay. So just let that selenite energy just 
just express itself from your beautiful heart, okay? Through all the parts of you. And it's going to just do that all by itself. Your energy field is like a major improvement. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for this super amazing experience. And thank you for sharing. For those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right. Thank you all again. I hope you all have a great day.